No huddle hurry up offense with women's monobob and the two man bob swips, switching and swapping throughout the day. So, my first guest in the booth today is Sylvia Hoffman, former US brake woman and now driver. And Sylvia, you've seen this track basically, well, not seen it at all from the back seat, but now from the front seat, where are the key areas that the drivers will be focused? Um, well, first of all, coming into start one, you want to make sure you're a little bit quiet. You want to get through the corner, make sure you're, you're feeling your way out to corner two. Um, the exit of corner two will set you up for corner three. It's kind of that problematic corner where you can't actually roll out of it. So a lot of drivers just try to crank it off of that at first. Um, and then you want to go down into the Devil's Highway. Um, it's it's a, some tricky corners down there, but nothing crazy. Uh, you want to stay smooth and quiet all the way through. Um, and then you'll come up to Shady 10. It's a big corner, lots of pressure. It'll shoot you out into 11. Um, and then you'll start entering the Labyrinth, which is uh, curves 11, 12, and 13. Going down to 14, you'll shoot the chicane. The biggest thing is going straight through without touching any of the walls. It's kind of crazy to do it. Um, 18 is a very hard and tricky corner. A lot of athletes will have issues with that, but the more experience you have, the better you'll get through. Corner 20, nice and quiet. Make sure you cut it through and you're on to the finish. So that's how we go with uh, with bobsled driving. <laughs> I learned all of that in one week. <laughs> there you go. Plenty more of, of learning before you've got the kind of experience that some of the sliders in the field have got. Particularly Kaylee Humphreys. I mean, she has been around a couple of uh, times around the block. She is our points leader over Cynthia Appiah. Bianca Ribi, the winner of the opening race this season, she lies in third place. So the Women's Monobob World Series, as it was for the last two or three years, which was sort of dotted around Europe, North America, and occasional World Cup races has become an official World Cup event. So this is the third ever World Cup. Uh, air temperature today hovering around at minus one degrees, ice down to minus four now. They had the refrigeration again cranked on hard last night because it was fairly mild after a lot of snowfall in the last 24, 36 hours. So uh, the ice should hopefully hold up nicely and not frost up too much. And again, as we said, there was a, a delay, so we didn't get any racing this morning. Oh, uh, yeah. The Swiss card schools never play cards with a Swiss coach. Just just for, for that. I'll, I'll keep that in my head. My Shirt off your back. Guaranteed. All right. Let's take a look at our start list. Kim Kalicki will be first off for the USA. Nicole Vogt, Kaylee Humphreys and Riley Compton. And uh, there are three Germans in the field, including uh, Lauren Alter, our women's bobsled world champion. She'll race the two-seat sleds tomorrow, as will almost everybody in the field. And Kaylee Humphreys, of course, is the Olympic monobob and world monobob champion. And it's going to be tough to beat here. Yeah, yeah. We haven't been uh, racing here in about three years, so it's really exciting to get all the races back to North America, Whistler, Park City, Lake Placid. Lake Placid is a really difficult track. Right here we have Kim Kaliki up first. Really powerful pusher, strong driver. She came out a few years ago, and she's just been kind of dominating on the circuits. I'm um, really excited to see what she can do here in Placid. Yeah, the days where she doesn't get a medal are very few and far between, Kim Kilicki. Are you a falter into the sled, a runner through the sled and jump her into the seat? I mean, the, the jury's out as to which works best. Uh, well, I started vaulting into the sled maybe at the end of my, my breaking career last year, so I think I'm going to try to keep that going into Monobob this upcoming year. Yeah. Okay, well, she is giving us an indication what the track is like. 107 kilometers an hour, 66.7 miles an hour. Stuff comes at you very quickly down here. Yeah, just a light tap going into uh, after 13. But you see, she shoots as she came really well. She's been really clean throughout the entire run. Um, and here comes that 18 corner. Let's see it. Really smooth as well. Again, here she goes coming up the finish with, uh, let's see. Out of corner, 20 ducks across the line. And a Brand track new track record. record. There we go. So, <laughs> uh, well, the track record set by uh, Lauren Brzezowski of the USA. And uh, Lauren set that in a North America's Cup race earlier this season, December 2nd, a couple of weeks ago when the NAC was here. Uh, Lauren not qualified for the World Cup team, but she was in the push champs. So we saw her in the flesh. 
Yeah, just wow. Like she she put down an amazing run right here. And here's the exit of 12. And just a little tap right there into 13 going in. Might push her down a little bit, but look at that exit of 14. Really clean, shooting a chicane, no left, no right wall tapping. And just, it's, it's a beautiful run. That's why she got a track record. And the first couple of years of driving these sleds, we saw the back walking around a lot, ski skidding around. It looks like everybody's really starting to get to grips with that. Although, I have to say in Park City, Kaylee's sled was definitely a little more tail happy than maybe she would have liked. But before we get to that, here is our second slider. 35-year-old American Nicole Vogt. And again, lots of noise at the top of the track. Yeah, we've always had one of the best uh, audiences out here for the bobsled and skeleton races. Um, we have Nicole Vogt, amazing driver. She's been driving for several years. Uh, I remember taking trips with her in a sled, and I mean, it was super smooth, and I kept telling her, I was like, man, you drive smooth. She's like, thanks, you know? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, she's an amazing driver, and let's see what she has going into uh, the Devil's Highway. All right, 3,700's back at the start, and that's going to be a deficit that she's going to need all this track to try and claw back. You see a little low in corner 10, but it's fine. Let's see what she has going through here. Now, none of the European teams are here apart from Germany and Switzerland, so it's a fairly thin field, no. which does mean that everybody competing here has a chance of getting good World Cup points early in the year. And that is most important, Martin, because that happened a couple years ago. Oh, come yeah. on, Nicole. Yeah, here we go. Little wavy 18-19. Right. Uh, having said that uh, the sleds looked a little bit more stable, actually hers did look like at high speed she was having a, a bit of an issue with the back of the sled. Yeah, they still, like, I mean, we, we try to take as many runs as we can in those monobobs, and we try to get really familiar with it, but sometimes the back end just gets away from us a little bit. You know, see that small tap right there on the left, double bunk tap, and going into corner 17 probably killed the speed just a little bit, but yeah. she, she looks like she got back on it, and she, look at that beautiful line going through 17, and, you know, like, we'll see what the rest of the sled has to the, the rest of the yeah. <laughs> rest of the race has to, has to say for it. All right, so Nicole Vogt, second of our sleds. So the deal here is we will have the first heat from the monobob. Immediately following them on the ice will be the two-man sleds. Then we'll have a 15-minute pause to spritz the track. Second heat of the monobob, then second heat of the two-man. Lots of coaching knowledge at the top of the track for Cynthia Appia. And in the cowboy hat there, Ivo Ferriani, the president of the IBSF, former Canadian coach in his time as well. Wow, 583 wow. start. That's a big <laughs> start by Cynthia Appia. She is still one of the most strongest pushers in the field. Uh, she's been so since a brakeman, and now she's a driver doing the same thing. A little hard tap out of three. Let's see what she can do down the course. Well, we talked about the start record which Cynthia holds since November 2019. It is three years old tomorrow. She just tied it. Wow. Yeah, she is an absolute start beast. Second best speed. Very close to Kim Kalicki. Oh, a little tap right there. Let's see what she can do. Set herself up for the chicane. Speed is good still, not quite so good. 2200s, it should be enough if she's clean through the heart. This could be the lead for uh, Cynthia Appiah, and bit. it will be a new track record if she does. Is she going to be like, below 61? Oh, she is below 61. 60.97 seconds. Wow, what a run. Two track records. Well, you get the best in the business at the track where they have not been for two or three seasons racing these sleds. And there you go, two track records in the first three sleds. Yeah, Martin, and that just, that just highlights the experience of these athletes. They can be away from a track for, let's just say, a couple years, two, three years, and then come back and still dominate, still break track records. And let's see if she can uh, break that start record that she set a few years ago, too. Oh, don't think she's aiming for that at all, do you? <laughs> <laughs> she wants everything. Well, stuff to clear up. I mean, again, didn't get it straight through the chicane, so yeah. there's time on the table. Cynthia, pretty happy with that first trip. More to think about in the second. She might need some more time as well because this is a class field. Yeah. And talk about class. Olympic and world monobob champion. 
You only get to do one of those for the first time ever, and Kelly Humphreys did exactly that. Let's see what the American can produce. Yeah, she's still a very major, strong competitor and a strong pusher from the start. Uh, I got to push with Kaylee for the last few years. She's an amazing driver, and I learned a bunch just by just riding in the back. Same, same thing as Nicole Volt, very smooth, very quiet going down the track. Um, you barely feel anything going down one of the toughest tracks in the world, Martin. I, I kid you not. Yeah. Well, when you've got Kaylee and Alana in the front of the sleds, getting brake women who can add to that is always the, the drama, isn't it? So if you get in the back of that sled, you know you've got speed. Best speed of all from Kaylee. Yep, and she was only 100 back, and now she's in the green. I think she's just going to continue to build on that lead, Martin. Yeah, new track record coming. Different set of goggles on. 121.0, best speed of all, 75.2 miles an hour. Yeah, just flying now, she's up by 22 hundredths. Wow. Really laying down a great run. Katie <laughs> Humphreys, 60.63. Wow. What a run, Martin. Um, this, this woman, she is amazing. She has done tons of things that everyone wishes that they could do, and they're still chasing, and she's still doing it healthy, strong, and then she's also motivating the younger athletes to come up and yep. do do some of these things because this is what's going to continue to uh, the, to propel the program forward for USA. Well, in, in the women's sport and in the men's sport, you've got Kaylee and Francesco Friedrich who are like the two targets that everybody goes for, and they both relish that challenge as well of, of younger athletes coming in with more ideas and more speed and, and challenging them. You, they, all, they both love a fight. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely a fighter, Martin, and I know she's going to do her best to come out on top in this race today. Um, next, we have Bianca Reby. Um, I actually did some research on this young woman um, <laughs> in, in the Whistler race. I was like, who is this person? And, you know, she's been dominating. She came out strong, and she still is, you know, like having to stop uh, top finishes, and now she's in Lake Placid. Let's see what she can do today. Yeah, we were all the same. Who is this Bianca Reby? And she ended up showing us exactly what she could do. So she's definitely made her mark. 6.08 start. Yeah, fourth best, best velocity at, at 51.9. Oh, she's skidding. Let's see if she can straighten it up by corner four into five. Yeah, she's, not, she's back on track now. It was a little sketchy, corners two and three, but you know, she was able to get it together in that little highway area, but she's in the red now, back by 3,900s. Let's see if she can kind of start to cut that into half, maybe, going into the finish. Well, second best speed to Kaylee Humphreys, which means quicker than Cynthia Appia, but oh. she rattles through the chicane. The speed went away from 11 to 12. Very tricky track, Mark. Very yep. tricky. Well, we saw it yesterday, particularly actually in the women's skeleton, where one of our medalists came from eighth place after the first heat, 35 hundreds away from the medals. It's so easy to give time away here. 61-4-0 for Bianca Ribi. Yeah, a little trouble at the top and then a little trouble at the bottom. Um, I mean, she was able to get her speed back up, but then she lost it at the very end there. Let's see a little tap out of there. Um, let's see what she has during the chicane. Yeah, exit of 14, you kind of tap on the right-hand side, and then it's just kind of squiggling out through there. She's trying to avoid the short walls. Um, it's kind of hard just to accept that tap, but, you know, maybe she'll get it, you know, a little bit better on the mm. next run. And look at that, sideways yeah. on the ice. Well, we've got the Can-Am hockey players in town, and, and they know exactly what happens when you put the skate sideways. <laughs> not much different here either. Nope, nope, not at all. All right, so Kaylee Humphreys leads from Cynthia Appiah and Kim Kalicki. Five down, four to go. And our third U.S. slider, Riley Compton, brand new from the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, Mum and dad are here at the track, rest of family and friends as well. See, 6.37, fifth best start. Uh, Riley, she's been developing over the last few years, and this is her first year on World Cup. Um, she's one of our one of our upcoming pilots, and she's had some promising runs in her. Um, let's see what she can do today. It's a little rocky up at the start. Going into seven, it looks pretty good. A little laid off of eight. Let's see what she can get in the, out of ten. All right, fourth best speed. 
And currently ahead of teammate Nicole Vogt, chasing down Bianca Ribi. If she can tidy that down here through the chicane, she could move up. Ooh, yeah. She has the same problems. Really hard steering there, probably lost a little speed going into corner 17 and 18. Yeah, she was kind of rescuing it there, wasn't she? That was definitely a scramble. And across the line, ducks ahead, 62-26. <laughs> And if she hadn't ducked ahead, it would have been a 62-27 or a 62-28 or 62-29. I've and seen it. I've seen it so yeah. many times. Uh, these drivers, they'll duck their heads at the finish, and they actually do lose a couple couple hundreds. They, yeah. they can maybe gain a spot even. Yeah. I've, I've seen it done a few times. Oh, I might absolutely. start actually practicing that. It, it's <laughs> enough to – hey, there's, there's no reason not to. It's enough to break a tie, and as you say, it can sometimes give you the hundredth that wins the race. Yep. Mind you, so can everything else on the track, but it's all about those little details. It's so choppy here, isn't it? it really is. bumpy the up ice. That chicane. Yeah. There's a slight uphill in the chicane, so it can be a little tricky just to kind of keep the sled balanced in all four runners. Started out her athletic career in softball. Her dad was a coach. He said it's great to come to the Bob Chucks. I know nothing about it. I don't I don't have to give her any advice. Well, next up, Lisa Bookwitz, 28-year-old push gold medalist in monobob and in the women's bobsled. Walked away two grand better off from last weekend. And again, another big push animal. Big Five push. Eight, Five eight, 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 eight with a start record. Oh, my goodness. I'm not surprised with Lisa. She is an amazing pusher. She's kept her pushes strong since she was a brakeman, and now she's a driver, still doing the same thing. That is what drivers need to do if we are transferring from the brakeman seat to the driver's seat. Uh, it's worth remembering that in February, she was in the back of a sled for Germany in the Olympics. We're here in December, and she's driving at the top level. Yeah, it's just amazing. She's been able to get a few runs in here and there as a driver, also being able to race as a brakeman, keeping everything strong and current. And then she starts off the first year of the quad in the driver's seat. Being, you know, like being the person that she is, strong pusher, fast driver. Here she is right now. She's, yeah. a, she's a little far back, 1700s now. Uh, let's see if she can bring it back at the finish. Uh, but she's been doing amazing this year, and I'm really happy for her to see what she can do. Absolutely. Ducks ahead. Uh, and there is her break woman, Nela, who uh, was in the back of the two-man sled, or two-seater sled. She got a grand as well. They didn't split it. So 60.87, 2400s behind the leader, Kaylee Humphreys, and ahead of Cynthia Appiah and Kim Kalicki. Yep, right now she's sitting in second. Look at that start position. Just still strong and powerful. Gets that sled moving really fast. This is exciting to see her do her thing. Takes the step in and then leaps into the set. And like you, having been on the back handles, all of that is natural. If you're a, a driver predominantly and you've always pushed on, I mean, like Kaylee for years on the front handle or Alana, then going back to that dip and getting the body into sled, all of that rotation, all that movement, you need to relearn it, whereas we, you guys haven't forgotten it. No, I still use that hit position just like I, as if I was still hitting yeah. the sled as a brakeman. It's so current. I've been doing it for four years, so I might as well keep it the yeah. same and not change it up. Here we have Melanie Hassler, really big Swiss pilot. She has been killing it the last few years. Uh, she finished sixth, didn't she, at the games? Yeah. Yeah. She's had a great coming out the last couple of seasons. Her first time racing in the World Cup in North America, 5.94 for her. Fourth and fifth place finishes so far this season, tantalizingly close to the medals. Yeah, she's starting to drop back a little bit, Martin, but she was, she had the third best start time. Um, and now she's coming down the track, a little bit behind. Let's see if she can get it back. Usually 10, you can start building that speed all over again. You can see she's quite a long way back in the sled. In the two-seat sled, your chin is right up against the cow. She's quite a long way back. Everybody's positioning the weight to try and get the, the feel they want out of the sled. And seventh best speed there. You know, we try to sit back a little bit further in the monobob so we can kind of, uh, we can 
start getting that weight difference going yeah. because there's no two man in the back. There's no brakeman, so now there's just nothing in the back. Just maybe wait to weight the sled sled down, but it gets so squirrely in that back end because there's no one sitting back there. So we have to sit back a little bit further, and we sacrifice that aerodynamics uh, yeah. just so we can maybe stabilize the sled a little bit more so we can get down the track as fast as we can. Yeah, skids are going to kill you a little bit more <laughs> yeah. than the air turbulence. She's a, a tall, rangy athlete as well, so she can get further back and still uh, get herself settled. Nice launch into the sled. Looks pretty quiet. And see, this isn't a bad tap. This is a decent tap out of three. A lot of athletes will tap out of three, but it's kind of hard to get through there. Um, but we try to thread the needle as, as quickly as, as, as best as we can. So Melanie Hassler comes down in fifth position. Our final sled in the first of our two heats, race three of the Monobob World Cup here in Lake Placid, is our Olympic bobsleigh champion, Lara Nolter. She was also the youth Olympic champion back in 2016. So in fact, her bobsleigh career started with monobobs, not the articulated kind we got here, but uh, more of a plank sled. Okay, fifth best start with a 596. So it's 200 slower than our current leader, Kaylee Humphreys. Ooh, little skid from one to two. Yeah, but Laura, she's an amazing driver as well. All these ladies are. Um, I'm pretty sure she can try to bring that back uh, up into, like, the metal area going into heat two. Um, let's see what she can do. We're going to enter corner 10. Really nice height. She's coming out of there really clean. Best speed of all, and she's only a tenth back. She's lost no more time to Kaylee Humphreys, the leader. This is a real challenge this for the top spot. Here. Best speed in the chicane, Best speed. 600s back. Little trouble off of 17, but she's in the greens now. Wow, track record coming. If she keeps it clean through 19 and 20, and she does. Oh, wow. track record. 60.47. That ice is fast. Yes, it is. Four times the track record has been broken in the first heat. That's very entertaining. And that might be interesting in the two-man race coming up very promptly as well. So it is Lauren Alter who leads. <laughs> yeah, I know she's really happy with that run. It started off maybe a little bit slower behind the pace, but... You know, as an Olympic champion, she knows how to find those fast lines and stay on them so she can get back in the lead. She sure can drive. Well, she pushed the same getaway as Kaylee Humphreys and ended up at the bottom of the track 1600s in front of the American. And Kaylee was saying in Park City that she feels that at highest speeds, the FES sleds that the Germans drive have a little bit more to offer than the BTC that she regularly drives. <laughs> <laughs> so greetings back home and uh, Merry Christmas and all of that from Lauren Alter and undoubtedly we'll see her again in a few minutes time or an hour or so time. There is the standings after the first heat of our winning women's monobob. They'll go in reverse order so Riley Compton will be first off and Lauren Alter will fill the dressing room well slightly empty around her because the two man uh, crews will all still be in there so, so they're, <laughs> it's they're not we'll... always a bad thing Martin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well yeah, I, certainly when you're on your own if they'd raced this morning as was intended then it really would have been lonely Bob you would have been in the changing room on your Correct. own not even with a great woman that's it then from the first heat of the Monobob World Cup here in Lake Placid two man coming up Monobob heat two and then the two man decider all packed in this afternoon so stay with us for lots more action can't wait